Ahoy boys and girls and welcome back to I Like Watches. Yeah, I think Ahoy is going to be my official greeting now. If it's good enough for Hamish and Andy, then it's good enough for me, isn't it? Did you end up looking up Hamish and Andy and Kyle and Jackie O like I suggested in my previous video where I unboxed those San Martins? If you did, let me know in the comment section what you think of their content. Right, Siegel have been in touch and they offered me two of four watches. Um, they said pick two of these four watches and they sent me some pictures and some links and I put it out to patrons. Which two of these four watches um, should I accept from Siegel to review? And um, yeah, the results were fairly even, but some people did point out that the military watch that was celebrating some sort of military conflict, perhaps um, not the right time to be reviewing uh, watches like that, um, which is a fair point. So I asked for um, two different watches and they have arrived. And um, in this video, I'm gonna unbox them both one of them, a little bit like the San Martin video, I'm going to produce a bit more of a formal review, go into a bit more depth, um, yeah, give you uh, facts, figures, stats, specifications, all that sort of stuff, a uh, little summary at the end. Um, but the other one, I'm just going to give you a quick look at and then I will produce a full review. Um, yeah, a couple of nice watches. If you're not familiar with Siegel, um, they are basically China's um, Seiko, um, a very uh, reputable and well-respected brand. Um, in fact, not just within the watch industry, but just... Generally within China, um, Siegel are a very well respected brand and um, yeah, they produce a lot of automatic movements, a bit like Seiko that they sell um, to other companies, um, but they also make watches themselves and they're on the whole quite expensive. Um, so yeah, when you um, get to see some more affordable watches like this that actually look good, um, they can be real gems. So fingers crossed. Right, let's take a look, shall we? While I'm unboxing and unwrapping these watches, let's just run through the prices and the movements. This first one, a lovely, simple dress watch. Um, this is the watch that I'm actually gonna review in the future, but you will get to take a quick look at this watch in this video. This is 105 US dollars, 108 euros, 91 pounds out of the sale. Fingers crossed this will be discounted even further in the sale at the end of August. It does contain an automatic movement, the ST17, which is their sort of entry level movement, 21,600 beats per hour. It doesn't hack, but it does hand wind. Now this second watch is going to be reviewed in this video, so stick around for that. It costs 189 US dollars, 192 euros, 162 British pounds out of the sale. Again, fingers crossed this will be reduced in the sale at the end of August. This watch contains an automatic ST2502, beats at 21,600 beats per hour, hacks and hand winds. It's a GMT watch as well, so there's an internal GMT rotating bezel, and it's also a calendar watch as well. Right, this is the first watch I want to show you. This is the watch that I'm gonna come back and review in more detail in the future because, well, it's my favorite out of the two. And I think it's also the watch that's going to appeal to more people. It's unheard of um, to see a Seagull watch for around $100, actually. Um, their cheap watches are usually around two to $300. And you look on AliExpress, some of their uh, watches are in the tens of thousands of dollars this one is really nice isn't it and i've checked the alignment i can't see any issues with it i can't see any specs on that very white dial well it's a sort of creamy color the leather strap not great you can hear it's a bit squeaky it was actually super stiff and um, the buckle's quite nice um so you might be able to salvage the buckle but this strap um yeah i would suggest um if you're interested in buying this watch expect to um, replace the strap that's quite impressive isn't it 10.2 millimeters for a roughly 100 dollar watch containing seagulls well basic entry level automatic movement it is literally their cheapest automatic watch um their second cheapest is the nomos tangent homage which i've featured on my channels in the past and that has sold very very well in the sales as well another stunning watch um, but this one even cheaper right here it is on the supplied strap and actually it looks fine um, you know the strap's not completely offensive it is just quite stiff and you can hear it squeaking away um, and it's also not my style um, it's not a shiny um, faux croc print at least um, it's a sort of matte or satin finish 
and the buckle is quite nice um, but yes I'm gonna take it straight off this strap now and pop it on something else so I'll be back in a mo. Here it is on a very nice collar red Italian leather strap and um, they sent me a couple of straps recently and they've started to feature in my videos these are really high quality straps I'll put some links in the video description um, yeah it looks all right doesn't it but I think we can do better. Here it is on the second collar red Italian leather strap I think this is one of my favorite straps um well ever i just love the color and the texture and um wow i mean i think that is a fantastic strap for this watch um yeah lovely um let's see what else we got and here it is on one of my favorite vario italian leather straps this tan strap um is oh, again um just so versatile um as is this watch i think um you're probably going to be able to put this watch on pretty much any leather 20 millimeter strap um, i'm gonna have fun in the full review anyway that's enough of that let's take a look at the other one now shall we right here is the second watch now when i posted on patreon asking patrons to choose between the four watches i didn't think this watch would get much love um, i thought it would be a bit too busy a bit too cluttered um yeah not a sort of simple elegant looking dressier watch is it um but actually there were quite a few people wanting a full review of this and actually i'm glad i chose this one in the end um because i hadn't fully understood the complications i didn't realize there was an internal um rotating gmt bezel there you can see um one through to twelve um yeah and actually the dial as much as there is more going on um, on this watch than there is on this one um, it does seem to be um, very nicely finished and there's a nice bit of detail on it and it's um, actually quite pretty isn't it um, there's the complications at the three and the nine um, the days of the week and the days of the month and um, yeah you can also see the movement in the back it's definitely a more chunky um, heavier watch you can feel that there's more weight in this watch than there is in this one and you can tell as well i mean it's yeah quite a bit thicker look and um there's a button there i hadn't even noticed that i wonder what that does we'll find out in a minute sorry i can't wait i'm too curious i suspect it does the days of the week yes it does look it advances the days of the week in the complication at the nine um this button down here does the days of the month there and as you can see i'm already showing you this one does the internal bezel um, the crown has one position and that is um, for the time and it is a hacking movement this one and again it's fully automatic mineral crystal in the back sapphire crystal in the front um, no AR coating seemingly the finishing on the watch seems nice uh, lots of polished surfaces there's no transitions between um, brushed and polished finishing on this one it is pretty much fully polished even the buckle look um, so yeah, lots of bling and shine, um, much nicer strap as well. Um, I'll give you some dimensions in a moment, but yeah, it's um, nice and soft straight out the um, box, this one. Um, no need to fiddle around with this one too much. Right, let's grab the calipers and give you some dimensions. The case diameter is roughly 42 millimeters. Thickness is 13.4. Case length, 51.7. 20 mil lug width, little bit of taper on the strap as well, down to just under 18. Is confirmation of the weight on the supplied strap then and uh, just under 93 grams screw down case back signed with some specifications and a pull push crown giving the watch 50 meters of water resistance no loom on this one either so time for another strap fashion show i think here it is then on the supplied leather strap and actually that top surface of the strap feels a little bit like suede it doesn't feel like your traditional leather strap um some nice contrasting stitching there as well which is uh Nicely done. Here it is then on the Collareb Italian leather strap. This is the brown strap. And um, it's amazing actually how much changing the strap, not just changes the look of the watch, but also the feel. It definitely feels a bit more comfortable, less bulky. Um, I wouldn't say it was cumbersome on the supplied strap, um, but it definitely gave the watch more presence. Whereas this just feels a little bit more discreet and comfortable i think it looks like it's fitting a little bit more nicely as well one thing i am actually quite impressed with is the location of the holes for the spring bars um they're nice and close to the case look so you don't have this huge gap between the strap and the case um yeah that looks good doesn't it 
I've gone a little bit left field with this one, um, the red Italian leather strap by Vario. Um, you can wear this strap on almost anything, um, but with sort of light silvery or white dials, um, I think red looks awesome. And actually, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, yeah, the design of the watch is not necessarily um, my favourite. It's um, not my sort of go-to design. I am a sort of dive watch, sports watch enthusiast. Right, let's think about the strengths and weaknesses. Um, I'm always impressed with the finishing of Seagull watches. Um, it's difficult to judge on a watch that's finished, um, well, the same all over, um, but the polishing seems nice. Um, yeah, it's usually transitions between brushing and polished surfaces where brands come unstuck with their finishing. Um, so none of that here. Um, but actually the dial seems um, nicely finished. Um, I'm not seeing any misalignment issues. The hands all seem to line up in the um, sub dials. Um, so yeah, definitely the finishing is a strength. The strap is actually a pretty decent um, quality, um, certainly compared to the other leather strap on the other watch. Um, and this watch isn't significantly more expensive than the other one. Um, so yeah, they've actually put a fairly nice strap on this one. It's perhaps a bit chunkier um, than I would want, um, but yeah, it's all right. I think the Seagull brand actually has to be a strength. Um, I've mentioned it already. They have a fantastic reputation. They do build some incredibly expensive and high quality watches. Um, all of their watches that I've ever seen um, have been very nicely made. I don't recall any quality control issues with any of their watches, actually. Um, I think they have to be um, one of the best brands I've ever seen for um, just consistent quality. And they are sort of a high street brand um, that sells watches on AliExpress. They're not an AliExpress brand that's looking to break out and sort of become a micro brand. Um, this company is huge. It's massive. Um, so I was always surprised to see their watches on AliExpress. But yeah, I mean, they must sell some on there. So why not? What about the weaknesses? Um, well, it's probably just a little bit chunky, isn't it? Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff to fit in that movement, which I do appreciate. Um, but when you look at the other watch, <laughs> it's 10.2 millimeters thick. Um, this one at almost 13 and a half millimeters thick. Um, yeah, perhaps a little bit chunky and a bit large for this sort of fancy dressier style watch. Um, but actually, I think that's about it. Um, the design, I've sort of mentioned that already. It's not really my thing, but, um, you know, that is a personal preference. Yeah, I'm struggling to find any weaknesses. Let me know, guys, in the comment section if you can see any weaknesses um, with this watch. Um, yeah, strengths as well. Feel free to chip in. Right, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to reviewing the other one, actually. I do think the other watch is going to be a particularly popular one, not just because of the price, but because of the execution and the simplicity of it. Um, yeah, I think it's a lovely watch, actually. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and take part in my giveaways, guys. Um, you know, they're free you just have to be a subscriber find the launch videos you could win a um, grand seiko yeah you heard me right grand seiko sbgx263 check it out right guys i'm gonna leave it there take care look after yourselves you'll see me again very very soon